This is one thing I'm stoked about. So Hoka, change your torrent laces. Hey guys, Dusty here. Today I have a special guest doing a shoe review, shoe comparison with me. This is our local trail running ultra superstar Morgan. And she's actually kind of sponsored by Hoka. She's on the Hoka Flyer team. And today I'm gonna be having her review the Hoka Torrent 2 up against the Hoka Zanal. Woo! Hi everyone. Um, like to backpedal a little bit on what Dusty said there. Uh, yeah, I recently got sponsored by Hoka in September as a Hoka Flyer. So I've had the privilege to be able to sample some pretty amazing shoes. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so to start off, um, let's compare how the shoes fit. So as you can see here, the Hoka Torrent is quite a bit wider across the upper and the Hoka Zanal is more narrow. I would say the fit of the Zanal is more like a sock light fit so when you put your foot in you feel very secured in the shoe um, and then in the hoka torrent i find if you like a little bit of more movement in the shoe when you're running um, it's definitely a bit wider and a little bit looser but then again i think that's the difference between a 150 dollars trail shoe and a 200 dollars trail shoe which which one is 150? Uh, the hoka torrent is 150 canadian and then the zanal is 200. okay yeah so I find, you know, you get what you pay for in a sense, although I always seem to pick the Torrent. Um, I've sampled the Torrent more than I have the Zanal because these were, the Hoka Zanal was released in the summer, so I haven't really had a whole lot of runs in it yet. Um, but we'll get back to that in a few minutes. I'll talk for now about the Torrent. So I started running on Maple, Zuhalem, you know, about 10 kilometer loops to 14 kilometer loops, and I really liked how the shoe handled the trail. Um, what I liked most about how is how light it was. Um, I find it quite nimble for a trail shoe. Also, the lugs on the bottom, they're really knobby, super grippy. I feel very secure, very safe in the shoe. Um, we get very wet conditions on our mountains here in the valley. So I find that when it's really slick out, the torrent has my feet, my back. <laughs> um, yeah, I really like the torrent. Um, I really got to test the torrent for speed. I would say when I ran with Kristen Smart and I ran on the gravel trail, which if you're not from here, that's the Trans Canada Trail out by the Kinsel Trestle. And you know, I said, hey, maybe just pace me for like a fast 5K. So we did 5K in 21 minutes, which was fast for me. As an endurance athlete, I don't particularly enjoy speed. <laughs> if I can do 10K in an hour, that's fast. Um, so then we like, let's keep going. So we ran 10K and ran 10K in 48 minutes, which I did not know I had it in me, but I did. And again, was stoked on the shoe. It was great on the gravel trail, tons of speed. So then we turned around, added an extra kilometer and I did 21.2K in an hour and 43 minutes. And wow. yeah, it was my fat, it is my fastest half marathon to date. Um, and again, the shoe is just amazing. So I, you know, kept wearing it after that on all my trail runs and for training. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I guess we can talk about the Zanal now. The Zanal. It's a great shoe. It's super nimble. It's very lightweight. I would say this is the speedster of the Hoka Trail shoes. Um, I really got to sample this shoe in the summer. So it came out in, or I got my hands on it in July. So I had this big route planned um, to run and kind of create a fastest known time route in the valley. So my partner and his friends every summer gather together and ride the infamous Five Crown, um, which in the valley is Mount Maple, Mount Zuhalem, Mount Pervo, Mount Sicker, Mount Richards. So it's all these five local mountains, um, none higher than 800 meters but you can create almost a perfect loop. Um, well, at least I found that out this summer. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I ran a few eight to 10 kilometer runs in the Zanal before I ran the five crown in them. And I was like, okay, these shoes are really fast. They can handle the ground really well. Um, I will make one noticeable difference um, is that the Hoka Zanal versus the Hoka Torrent, as you can see, Yes, the Hoka Zanal has a Vibram Mega Grip, which is great, but the lugs are significantly smaller and also there are fewer of them. So I find for this shoe, it works great and it's super sturdy on maybe less technical terrain, 
um, which I lucked out on the five crown that day and it was pretty less technical. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get back to that. So I ran just under 70 kilometers in the Hokas and all, um, just under 3000 meters of climbing. 78% of my run was trail and then yeah the remainder 22 percent was road so i combated both in the zanal i did the road and the trail and i have to say they held together really great so on the climbs i noticed i was quicker than i am in the torrent i don't know if that has anything to do with maybe burning less energy because there's less lug so you're therefore closer to the ground kind of how like a road shoe would feel I noticed on the road I was really quick. Not that I wanted to be quick in 70K. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was really stoked on how they performed and how they felt. Um, like I said, the upper is really snug. It's like a sock fit. So I never felt like my ankle was rolling at all. Um, and yeah, like I said, the speedster. So how I would use them is more technical, longer distance. I would rock the torrent. And then for maybe 30K and under, which is like short distance for an endurance athlete, <laughs> um, and speed work or just wanting to cruise faster, I would recommend the Zanal. And door to trail Zanal? Yeah, I would say. So I've been testing that lately. Dusty and I have a little loop um, off of our Butis Avenue in Maple Bay where probably like 4K is on the road and then 5K and like 300 meters of climbing's in the trail. It's super beautiful, very epic. Um, you get to look down on the bay and it's it's a nice cruise for sure. But yeah, this shoe, um, they don't say online that it's like a door to trail shoe. That's what the challengers recommended for. But for that amount of distance and just with the lug, I can't see the little bit of pavement eating it up. And because they're so nimble, um, it's a fast cruise. Yeah. Yeah. I have only sampled these in summer conditions because they just came out. So maybe we can do another review in like a few months because, uh, yeah, it's pouring out today. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wet weather is here and I would love to try them um, on like the rockier terrain and just see if I can prove Hoka differently that maybe they <laughs> are good on more technical trails. But I can tell why this is a $200 shoe. Yeah. Because you're paying for the upper. Like the upper doesn't stretch. It doesn't mm. loosen. It's really breathable. If you can see like, I mean, these aren't worn, but mm -hmm. the torrent, like there's already a little bit of creasing and I have barely ran in these ones. So these ones I've probably ran maybe 50 K in these ones. Oh. Um, yeah, quite fortunate to, <laughs> to get torrents often. They Hoka knows it's my favorite shoe, but yeah. So I think in theory, this being $200 makes sense also for the Vibram, like the Vibram always Vibram, comes at a premium price. Yeah, yeah. it does. Does the speed goat have Vibram? It does. It does, yeah. yeah. So hence that $200 margin right. for trail shoe. One thing I noticed that's pretty funny about both shoes, I don't know if anybody else ever has their shoelaces come undone. Um, as a trail runner, it's like a death trap. <laughs> uh, so sometimes I'll like double knot them. This is one thing I'm gonna show you. This is one thing I'm stoked about. So Hoka, change your torrent laces. You can't even see the top of the torrent laces well, they're because longer. they are so much longer so when you bunny loop them mm -hmm. you're almost walking like you're almost tripping on With the bunny the torrent, loop yeah. yeah so that's another difference <laughs> also these laces on whatever they're made out of on the zanal they stay together so like they don't come undone i find that i'm retying my my torrents really but again could be 150 dollar trail shoe versus 200 dollar mm -hmm. It's funny, the, you still prefer the $150 shoe. <laughs> I know. I think it's because I still, like, it hasn't hit me that I run for Hoka. Mm. Like, so I, I feel like I've $150 for a trail shoe is always something I could afford. Mm -hmm. So now I just feel like I have, like, I have an honor to be able to say, hey, I need a new pair of trail shoes. Right. <laughs> and the fact that I can try a $200 tra trail shoe, um, I feel really fortunate. Mm. Okay, I think that's going to be it for the video. Uh, a big thank you to Morgan for helping me with the review. I don't have either of these shoes, so it was nice to bring Morgan in and uh, get her take on both shoes. And let us know down below in the comments if you want to see more of Morgan. Maybe we could do like a Morgan Monday or something. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Because you have it. a ton of Hoka shoes that I don't have. So much. Yeah, ton, tons of review. So yeah. Tons of review I could give. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, thanks so much for having me. This was fun. It's a great way to get out of the storm on a Monday. <laughs> yeah, it's not a nice day. <laughs> no, it's a torrential downpour outside. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.
Take care.